Sorry about this, but I've been getting grief from my Year 13 students about the way I always start these quick revision videos in the same way, so I'm going to have to do this one slightly differently. A quick revision video on the AS organic mechanisms. So we're talking about radical substitution, electrophilic addition and nucleophilic substitution. So we'll start with radical substitution. The example I'm using is cyclohexane with chlorine. So there's the overall equation and that will be classed as mono substitution because one hydrogen from the cyclohexane has been substituted with one chlorine. And notice that the reaction is carried out under UV light. So the mechanism operates via three steps. So the first step is the initiation step. That's where the UV light splits the covalent bond between the two chlorine atoms into two free radicals and the dot there represents the unpaired electron. So that's referred to as homolytic fission because there's an equal sharing of the two electrons from the covalent bond that's broken. So in other words, each chlorine atom receives one electron from the broken bond. Next we get the propagation steps. We always get two of those. So the first one, you take your, in this case, cyclohexane and your chlorine radical and we are going to generate an HCl molecule. So chlorine radicals strip out the hydrogen and we get HCl and the leftovers is a radical. So in this case, it will be C6H11 radical. So the radical that's just been produced feeds into propagation two. And basically what happens is the radical strips out one of those chlorines and generates this molecule here. And we get a chlorine radical leftover. And finally, termination, so you take any two radicals that have been produced in the mechanism and combine them. So I've gone for those two there. Now, if the chlorine was present in excess, then the chlorine radicals that are reformed in the second propagation step, they could then go and start stripping out the next hydrogen and you get another pair of propagation steps and that can continue ultimately till all the hydrogens have gone. So the next mechanism we'll look at is electrophilic addition and I'm going to use cyclohexene and chlorine as my example. So keeping it very similar to the previous one. So there's the overall reaction. Cyclohexene C6H10 reacts with chlorine and we get an addition reaction. So two reactants become one product. So the mechanism now, there's the cyclohexene and the chlorine side by side. Ordinarily, a chlorine molecule is nonpolar because of the identical electronegativity in the two CLs. However, as it gets closer to the carbon-carbon double bond, the electron density around the chlorine is going to be repelled towards the right here. And so we get a dipole across the molecule that looks like that. Now this can act as an electrophile and electron pair acceptor because we've got this slightly positive part to the molecule. So we show that like this. So pair of electrons from the double bond attracted to this chlorine and then the pair of electrons in this bond are going to be completely repelled onto that chlorine and break the bond and this time we get heterolytic fission that's because the chlorine this one here gets both of the electrons from the bond that's going to give us this carbocation a chloride ion and then the chloride ion attaches itself to the positively charged carbon like that and we get the product 1,2-dichlorocyclohexane. So we're finishing with nucleophilic substitution. Example I'm using is chlorocyclohexane with the hydroxide ion. So you could be reacting with, say, sodium hydroxide or something like that. So there's the equation. So we'll look at the mechanism now. The carbon-chlorine bond in the chlorocyclohexane will have a dipole across it because of the higher electronegativity of chlorine. The hydroxide ion is going to act as a nucleophile and electron pair donor and it's going to donate that pair of electrons on the oxygen to the slightly positive carbon and that's going to repel the pair of electrons in that carbon-chlorine bond completely onto the chlorine and break the bond by heterolytic fission. So the products look like that.